Praise the Lord. Thank God for another opportunity to share his word. Truly, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. <clears throat> Topic for the tonight's uh, Bible study is walk like Christ walked. You say walk like Christ walked. Yes, every born again believer, I believe, has the strength, the power, the ability through the leading and guidance of the Holy Spirit to walk like Christ walked. And so that's what I want to talk about a little bit tonight. Father, we come to say thank you. We thank you for yet another privilege, another opportunity to share your word. Father, as your word goes forth in power and might, we just want to thank you in advance for the healing, for the deliverance, for the peace, for the joy, most of all, for the salvation that's going to come. Father, right now, touch every heart, touch every mind, touch every spirit, Lord God. And Lord, even now, Lord God, as you allow me this privilege to share your word, I ask that it's shared in a manner that will honor and glorify you as it blesses your people. I thank you, I praise you, I bless you for us. In the name of Jesus, I pray, amen and amen. Again, walk like Christ walked. I'm gonna open with scripture in Ephesians chapter five, verse number one, it reads, it says, therefore be imitators of God as dear children. And when you look at imitators, it's a person who copies the behavior or actions of another, a copycat a follower, one who's mimic, an impersonator. And so what the scripture is saying here is that we should impersonate God. We should uh, copy his behavior. We should copy his actions and his actions are seen through his son, Jesus. And so that's what we're called to do. And again, Ephesians 5, 1, it says, therefore be imitators of God as dear children. So I would say it's safe to say that an imitator is one who copies what somebody else does or copies the way a person speaks or copies their behavior. And so as born again believers, we're called to copy the behavior of God. And God gave us that behavior and, and, and gave us an example through his son, Jesus. And so I, I look at it this way. What do you think would make God happy with his children in the natural way? parents as grandparents we we want our children to to imitate uh some of the things that we do especially when they're good and and it makes us proud to see our children imitate those things that we do you know the old people used to say now children are very very good imitators and so make sure that you give them something good to imitate and so when we look at the word of god god has given us uh examples throughout scripture to imitate uh, Jesus's walk. Now, when you look at the scripture, the scripture says that God is love, and we can read that in 1 John. In 1 John, it says that God is love, and he who loves uh, uh, knows God. He who does not love does not know God. And so, if we are to, first of all, begin to uh, imitate who God is, it's going to begin with our love walk. Romans 8, uh, 16, it reads, it says, the Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. So if we are in fact children of God, being, being born again believers, because there's no grandchildren that makes us children, that makes us joint heirs with Jesus, that makes us sons and daughters. And so if in fact we are, then the scripture is calling us to imitate, uh, excuse me, imitate God who is our father. And so again, I'll read from Romans 8, 16, the Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And so if in fact the Spirit is bearing witness with you, and the only way you can know that is that you have accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, and you now have the Holy Spirit living on the inside, and with the Holy Spirit living on the inside, the Holy Spirit will indeed bear witness with you, and you will know beyond any doubt that you in fact are in the family of God. Praise God. And so again, to imitate God means to walk, um, to walk in love, to, to again, mimic God, to, to uh, do what God does. I had said that uh, as I was talking that 1 John, that's actually 1 John uh, chapter 4. I'll be reading verses 7 and 8. It says, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. And everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. 
And so when you look at it, we have to understand that as our father, as we are to mimic, as we are to uh, imitate, we should be imitators of, of God. And, and he said, as dear children. And so as a child looks at his father, as he looks at daddy, as he looks at mommy, as he looks at granddaddy, as he looks at other uh, 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 figures that's in his life, and uh, praise God, he wants to mimic them. He wants to imitate them. He wants to act like them. And so if we are, or you are in fact, a born again believer and in the family of God, a child of God, a son of God, a daughter of God, then we should be imitating our father. Praise God. <clears throat> again, he who does not love does not know God for God is love. I was looking at um, a, a number of ways that we could possibly uh, demonstrate God's love. And I, I took the liberty of writing down a, a, a four or five, and I'm gonna start by uh, my little list I have here. The first way you can show love is you can show love by listening. You say listening? Yeah, you know, uh, and I know even in my very own life, sometimes you can hear and not be listening. You can hear a person speaking and not pay enough attention to them to actually be listening. I believe that a demonstration of love is to actually uh, 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 listen to what somebody is actually saying to you. The next one is, is being generous. Now, a lot of times, as soon as you start talking about generosity, people start talking about uh, uh, money. And, and, and always, you can be generous with your time. You can be generous with, you know, certain things that's in your life. And sure, generosity uh, uh, a lot of times can mean how, what you give to somebody. And it could be from a, a financial perspective. It could be from uh, your time. It can be your energy. It could be the effort that you put into something. But I, I these this is a, a, a very good display of love. And so when we learn to be generous with others, it's a, it's a sign of love. It's a sign of, of, of walking and imitating God because God is very generous to us. Praise God. The next one that I want to look at is encouraging others. Now, I believe this is a, is a, a really big one because uh, people need to be encouraged. I need to be encouraged. You need to be encouraged. There's a lot of things that's going on in our lives. There's a lot of things that's going on in the house. There's a lot of things that's going on on the job, you know, just in, in particular in, in this nation around the world. And sometimes those particular things can discourage us. And so we need to have someone at, at some time come alongside of us to lift us up, to encourage us, to let us know that it's going to be all right, to let us know the hold fast to the word of God, to let us know that we are to trust God. I think about again, very, very familiar scripture, uh, uh, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, trust in the Lord with all your heart, lean not into your own understanding, in all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. And when you take something like that to somebody, it's, it, it can encourage them, it can build them up, it can help them fight another day, praise God. The next thing is, um, acts of kindness you know uh today people are not very kind one to another and uh when you look at our our school system that's that's probably the best way the best place to start children are so mean one towards another they're not kind and uh, I, I believe that it stems from i believe i know it stems from um behavior that starts in their home um, when parents, grandparents, other siblings are not kind to them, they want to go and find somebody that they can actually take out uh, those particular frustrations on. And so now they're not displaying levels of kindness. As a matter of fact, they're mean. And, and so you can show God's love by being kind one towards another. Now, here is one way that I believe that we can show God's love. And this, uh, again, is another one of those major ones just to to pray one for another. Yes, to pray one for another. You know, it would be pretty difficult to actually uh, 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 be praying and, and actually be hating a person. So there's got to be a level of love that's going on in your heart, even for your enemy. Because when you think about it from this particular perspective, there's not a person 
uh, uh, regardless of who they are, regardless of what they've done, that we actually can't uh, uh, show love to. And so a lot of times by praying for a person, that's, that's a way to show love. And, and regardless of where they are, regardless of how bad they are, regardless of what they've done, you still pray that, that God touch their hearts. You pray that God would touch them, that God would deliver them, that God would, would set them free. You know, so often we point fingers at people because of the state that they're in, you know, uh, somebody struggling with alcohol, somebody struggling with, with drug abuse, somebody's, you know, struggling with, 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 with uh, their sexuality. So, so many areas, but the first thing folk want to do is point their finger at somebody, but uh, start praying for them. Start, start showing God's love. Start praying that God would touch them, that God would heal them, that God would deliver them, that God would set them free. Praise God. And so as I go on, I, uh, we are, you are, I am, we're called to be compassionate. God is compassionate to us. Just think about your shortcomings and, and God is still there for you. The scripture says that he would never leave us nor forsake us. And that means that he's right there with you and I. That means that he's right there even in the midst of the storm that you're going through right now. The scriptures say that God is righteous. And if God is righteous, that means that we should be righteous. That means that the way that we're living, it should be a righteous uh, uh, a way of living. When we're judging others, when we're uh, dealing with others, it should be a, a righteous way that we're dealing with them. In other words, it's uh, other ways where you and I can truly imitate God as dear children. I was looking at some other ways and some other areas of our lives where we should be imitators of God. First Peter uh, chapter one, verses 14, excuse me, 14 through 16. It reads, it says, as obedient children, not conforming yourselves to the former lust as in your ignorance, but he who called you is holy. You also be holy in all your conduct because it is written, be holy for I am holy holy. Now, this is uh, a, a few verses of scripture where you have to uh, uh, think about this and you have to take your time with this. First Peter chapter one, verses 14 through 16. Verse 14, it says, as obedient children. And if in fact you are a child of God, praise God, we're talking about your level of obedience to the spirit of God. Now it says, not conforming yourselves to the former lust as in your ignorance. In other words, <clears throat> prior to your conversion, there were some things that you did. There were some things that you said. There were some places that you used to go. But the scripture says now, don't do those things that you did, <clears throat> excuse me, in your formal lust because it was done in ignorance. It was before you knew the saving grace of Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. <clears throat> First Peter 1:15. But as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct. Not some of your conduct, but here's the whole key. The, 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 the word is saying he, meaning God, God who called you has a standard and he's not going to lower the bar for anybody. He's not going to lower the bar just because you don't think that um, you can or even should measure up to his word. So it says, but he who called you, meaning God, that high standard, that holy standard, he who called you is holy and God is holy. And what does holy mean? For us, holy means sanctified. Holy means set apart for God's service. So he who called us, God, the holy one, he called you. He said, be holy in all your conduct, not some, but all. Now, one in 16, it says, because it is written, it is the word of God, it is the written word of God. It says, be holy for I am holy. And so God is saying, because of the relationship, praise God, that you have with me as your father, as you being dear children, you are to be as your father is and your father is in fact holy. And so 
we are to be, you are to be. If you in fact are a born again believer, you should be holy as God is holy. Praise God, glory to God. Luke chapter six, verse number 36, it reads, it says, be merciful just as your father also is merciful. Now, that's one of those things that we, I don't think we show enough of to others, especially in your home. You're merciful to this person, you're merciful to that person, but you don't show enough mercy in your own house. You don't show enough grace in your own home. And so as the scripture says here, be merciful just as your father also is merciful. Remember, we are to be imitators of our father as dear children. And the scripture says that the spirit will in fact, and I paraphrase, confirm to us that we are in fact children of God. That means sons and daughters, praise God. And so if in fact we are sons and daughters of God's, then we are called to imitate our father. Praise God, <clears throat> excuse me. Matthews chapter five, verse number 48. And it reads, it says, therefore you shall be perfect just as your father in heaven is perfect. Now, let me go on record right now to tell you that this particular verse of scripture is not talking about perfection. It's talking about completeness. It's talking about here as believers, we are supposed to be complete in our walk. We're supposed to be complete in our love walk. In other words, <clears throat> there should not be things there that uh, prevents us from loving the way that we should love. It should be a complete package. It should be the fullness. It should be everything that we need to walk, to live, to talk, most of all, to love like God love. Praise God. And so when you look at that, in, in, in other words, when we talk about a completeness, God is saying that I am not going to, and I, I, I spoke about this just a little bit earlier, I'm not going to lower the standard uh, to accommodate you and your sinfulness. In other words, where I talked about be ye holy, for I am holy, be holy in all your conduct. Now we're talking about a level of, of completeness. That's why the scripture here in Matthew 5, 48, it reads, it says, therefore you shall be perfect just as your father in heaven is perfect. See, there's a completeness, there's a fullness, and we can experience that same completeness, that same fullness in our walk of faith. And so I believe in my heart of hearts that he has given to every born again believer the power to keep this righteous standard. It's a matter of uh, uh, the desires of our heart. It's a matter of whether or not we want to conform to the things of God or do we still want to be disobedient and allow flesh to rule and reign and dictate what it is that we do in spite of what the word of God says that we are called to do. And that's where the real problem lies because that completeness that we're talking about is, is a level uh, uh, that, that gives you and I, as born-again believers, the power, the authority to walk in God's love. And again, and I, I look at a little note here, it's a matter of being obedient to the leading and guidance of the Holy Spirit. And even in that, one must have a desire to be obedient to the leading and guidance of the Holy Spirit. Now, I want to share another way as I uh, near closing this particular uh, lesson. Ephesians 4, uh, 32. Ephesians 4, verse number 32. And it reads, it says, And be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. Now, <laughs> When you look at this, and I know a lot of times people talk, well, I'm not going to forgive him. I'm not going to forgive her. You don't know what she did to me. You don't know how bad they hurt me. You don't know. Back up just one moment. Think about how bad you hurt God. 
think about the pain. Think about what Jesus experienced on the cross for you. And the reason why that was done was because he died for the sins of the world. He died for your sins. He died for my sins. He died that we might be forgiven of our sins. And so when we look at this, and I know you continue to go back and talk about, well, you just don't know how I'm feeling. Try and imagine what Jesus went through and you've not given up any blood on behalf of any of those particular situations. What's happening right now is that you continue to hold on to, to anger and, and the bitterness. And, and when you see that person, when you talk about that person, when you think about that person, the only thing that, that comes to mind is, is anger and, and bitterness. And so when we look at, again, Ephesians 4, 32, it says, and be kind to one another tender-hearted forgiving one another even as God in Christ forgave you because of what Christ did on the cross it gave you and I the privilege the right the opportunity to be forgiven of our sins be kind to one another tender-hearted in other words that hard heart that, that, that's been driving you. Do you know that when you are walking around bitter, evil, angry, those things right there just take you away from the experiencing the joy, the peace that God has for you. And you say, well, how, how does that happen? What happens is because you've allowed those things to be in your spirit, it stops you from receiving. It's like a, a blockade. It's like something that's preventing you from truly experiencing the fullness that comes from an intimate relationship with Almighty God. And when you're not experiencing the, the intimacy, that means then that, that you're kind of distant. It doesn't mean that God is not there, but what it does mean is that with what you're going through, with what you're experiencing, those experiences stop you from experiencing the intimacy that can come from being in the right relationship with Almighty God. And so that's why the scripture here in Ephesians 4, 32, it says, and be kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another. But here's the thing, even as God in Christ forgave you. And so I'm not telling you that it's that 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 it's easy to do this, but I'm telling you that with the presence of Almighty God's Spirit operating in your life, you can begin to show some kindness. You can begin to become tender-hearted. You don't have to be hard-hearted. You don't have to always be ready to fight, always be ready to engage in an argument. What happens from here on is you can begin to allow the Spirit of God to minister to you and through you, and then in turn it will help you, it will allow you, when you're in the presence of those uh, uh, folk who, who, who have wronged you, those people who still do you a disservice, you can still show God's love. Remember I said very early on, regardless of who it is, regardless of what they've done, there's still a level of love that you can show to everybody, including that person or persons who have hurt you. And it's a matter of really allowing the Spirit of God to have His way in your heart. Yes, sometimes to get over those things, I'm not telling you that it happens overnight. I'm telling you that it's a process. For some, it can happen overnight. For others, it is a process. The whole key to it is, is when will you allow the process to begin? That's the key. Because at some point in time, you have to allow the process to begin. With us, most of the time, uh, because of the state that we're in, because of the level of anger, the level of bitterness that we're in, it makes it difficult to even begin the process. But somewhere along the line, you must allow the process to take place.
Praise God. As I close, I want to just say this. Um, believers should follow the example of God's actions. Not action, but God's actions. Listen to this. He loved you and I even when we were still his enemies. And so when I look at that from that particular perspective, God demonstrated real love. It says, yet while we were still sinners, Christ Jesus died for us. Now, suppose Jesus waited until after I got things together. Suppose he waited until after you got things together. We'd still be in that sin state because we would not have those things together. But because of his death, his burial, and resurrection, you and I, praise God, can be saved. You and I now have been set free, free from sin, glory to God, and now in a personal, intimate relationship with Jesus Christ, glory to God. And so when I look at um, walk like Christ walked, it's possible for you and I to walk that way, to walk in love, to walk in forgiveness, to extend grace, to extend mercy, even as Jesus extended those things to us, or God extended them to us through his son, Jesus, we in turn can extend those to others. Again, it's a matter of showing love. It's a matter of being patient one with another. It's a matter of being tenderhearted. It's a matter of being kind. And you can walk like Christ walked. You know, so many times people will tell you, how in the world can you walk like God walked? Because the scripture says that I open up in Ephesians 5 and 1, be imitators, imitators of God as dear children. And then the scripture goes on, as I was reading up from the book of Romans, it says that the spirit himself will reveal or has revealed to us that we are in fact children of God. That makes you a son, that makes you a daughter. And if we are in the family and we are to imitate our father, that means we can begin to walk in love. Remember I said from a natural perspective, as parents, we want our children to imitate us. Mothers, when you have that little girl and the first thing that she wants to do, she wants to slip your high heels on. She, she wants the lipstick. She wants all those different things. She wants the little makeup thing. She wants a little cooking oven so she can imitate what you do in the house. Praise God. Fathers, those sons, when you're in the bathroom and you're, you're, you're shaving, they want that fake razor so they can begin to shave and do those things. And, and that's how they begin to imitate us. And so in the natural, uh, the old folks say, give them something good to imitate. One thing about our father, you know he's already given us the best. He gave us the best when he gave us his son, Jesus. The scripture says that if he gave us Jesus, he would not withhold anything from us. The scripture also says in the book of, of, of Psalms, it says that he would not withhold anything good from those of us who walk up rightly. And so just be mindful that we can walk like Christ walked. Praise God. Father, we thank you for this privilege, this opportunity to have shared your word. I pray your word has been an encouragement to your people. I pray right now that there will be some right now that will say, thank you, Lord. There will be some right now that would sit up and take notice of how they've been walking, what they've been doing, that level of bitterness that's been there, Lord God. And Lord, they can now begin to reject that bitterness, Lord God. They can begin to walk in the love of Jesus Christ. We thank you. We praise you. We bless you. For us in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Glory to God. Maybe you're uh, 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 listening and you You've heard some of the different things that was said, and, and right now the Spirit of God is, is calling you to get right. The Spirit of God is saying, now is the time. 
Now is the time to enter into a relationship with me through my son, Jesus. And so if you're being called right now, you say, well, what is it that I need to do? What's the next step? The scripture in Romans talks about, first of all, that we must confess with our mouth and believe in our heart that Jesus died on the cross for the sins of the world. He was buried and raised from the dead and he now sits at the right hand of the father the scripture in romans also says that whosoever shall call upon the name of the lord shall be saved and so this again is a confession and is a belief and when we talk about the heart we're talking about the entire being we're not talking about this vessel that just pumps blood we're talking about the entire person we're talking about what you're feeling here what you're thinking here and they are together and so if right now you know beyond any doubt that you're being called by the spirit of the living God to get right now is the time to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior and I would ask you to repeat this prayer of faith you say Father God it's in the most precious name of Jesus that I come before you Father, I recognize and believe that Jesus died on the cross for the sins of the world. I believe that you accepted the death of Jesus for the sins of the world. I'm a sinner. Forgive me of my sins. Jesus, come into my heart. Live in me and through me for the glory of God. Jesus, thank you for coming into my heart. I accept you this day as my personal Lord and Savior. Father, thank you for receiving me into your family. It's in the name of Jesus I pray, amen and amen. And I say to you, welcome to the family of God. The scriptures say the angels in heaven are rejoicing over your conversion. I'm rejoicing over your conversion. I suggest that you get that Bible, begin reading in the New Testament. I suggest St. John chapter 1, beginning at verse number 1. But the most important thing that you could do right now is find that Bible-believing, teaching church and go in and become an active member of God's family. Praise God. And I say to the entire listening audience, I ask the Lord's blessings on you and your family. May he keep you in his perfect peace. I love you and God bless you in Jesus' name, amen and amen.